How many of the popular artists that you follow have gotten lucky at some point to get themselves to where they are today? Today we're talking about how you can find the opportunities for luck to strike and how you can have the confidence to pounce on those opportunities when they do strike. That's right, today we're getting lucky. What's going on, everybody? I am Youngman Brown, and this is Your Creative Push, the podcast and the YouTube channel that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. And today we're talking about lucky breaks. And we've often talked on the podcast about lucky breaks in terms of the creative process, about putting yourself in the position for the muse to come to you, to give you that inspiration. And all of that derives from actually sitting in the chair, actually putting yourself in the position for inspiration to strike, for luck to strike. But what about in terms of your art itself, in terms of your artistic career, opportunities for the world to see the art that you've made or to hear your voice? Perhaps that comes in the form of working or collaborating with a hero of yours. Or perhaps it comes in terms of standing in front of a huge crowd of people and rocking out. And that's actually the story I'm going to tell you today about a little band called Goodnight Sunrise. It's made up of David Coachberg and Vanessa Vicaria, who are actually both on the podcast, and we'll link their episodes below. But they told me the story about the time a, a local radio station put out the call that they were looking for a local band to open for Bon Jovi when he was in Toronto. And they had the same reaction that I would have and that maybe you would have as well. These doubts, these thoughts of, who am I? Who are we? We're not good enough. This is the kind of stuff that happens to somebody else. But they pushed through those feelings and they still tried. Like Vanessa says, you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. And they got it. They did it. They got to open for Bon Jovi, which to this day remains one of the coolest stories that I've heard on the podcast, and I know it is one of the highlights of their lives and their careers. You can easily talk yourself out of going for opportunities. I have no chance. I'm not good enough. Maybe some other day. Maybe once I've built up these other accolades, then I can go for it. Or of course, the classic, this kind of stuff doesn't happen for me. This is something that happens to other people. But you're right. It is something that happens to other people, and it is something that doesn't happen for you, and you don't have a chance because you have that mindset, because you put yourself in the position to think that you're not worthy, so you don't even, like Vanessa says, buy the lottery ticket. You don't even take the chance. A lot of this has to do with rejection, fear of uh, people not liking you, or fear of failure, but when it's something that you feel like you have no chance, or it's like a one in a million chance you're probably going to not get it anyway. So try to let that be somewhat of a comforting thought that, okay, well, I didn't really have much of a chance anyway, but at least I tried. The thing is, the more and more you do that, the more times you buy a lottery ticket, or I like to think of it as Plinko chips from everybody's favorite game, Plinko on The Price is Right. And let me just say, if I went on The Price is Right, I would much rather play Plinko and like win 500 bucks, I think, than win a car. Because Plinko is the funnest game to me uh, that the world has ever invented. I would die to, <laughs> to go and play Plinko. But anyway, in Plinko, you get chips. You can win chips. And the more chips you get, the more chances you have to get the big prizes or the small prizes. So I like to think of it as accumulating as many Plinko chips as you possibly can. There's no shortage of Plinko chips. You can continue to put yourself out there, whatever your Plinko opportunity is, whatever the big prize or the small prize is for you, you can continue to put yourself out there. I always like to think of a prize as something that I would be nervous to receive, something that I'd be nervous to have in my life, something that gives me, I like to call them nervous farts. If I imagine myself doing a thing, 
perhaps speaking in front of a bunch of people, perhaps starting a YouTube channel and speaking to a camera, starting a podcast, whatever it is for you, those things that give you those nervous feelings, go towards them no matter what. Take those chances to get those opportunities to happen for you. Even if you are scared of them, that is a good test. That is something that you need to try for. When you start to get used to putting yourself out there of dropping the Plinko chip and hitting a big fat zero of failing, of getting rejected, uh, of the opportunity just not working out for you, you're going to start to grow immune to it, to those feelings. And that is going to serve you greatly in four major ways. Number one, you're going to realize that the world kept spinning. You put yourself out there, it didn't work out, and everything was fine. You didn't die. Number two, realizing number one, that you didn't die, it's going to be easier for you to go for more opportunities. You're going to know that everything is going to be fine on the other end, and it's going to make it a little bit easier every single time to go for new opportunities or even bigger opportunities. Number three, you're going to start to see new opportunities. You're going to start to see bigger grander, uh, or maybe even secret opportunities that you can kind of make for yourself. And you're going to be that much more emboldened to go for those things as well. You're going to not only clear some of the opportunities that you've always wanted to try for off of your slate to open up the, the mental bandwidth to see the new opportunities, but you're also going to sort of have this superpower of seeing everything as an opportunity but you have to get to that position first. You have to start putting yourself out there. And the fourth and, I argue, most important way that this is going to serve you is that you are going to be ready to strike when luck actually does hit. You're not going to be back at the starting gate, mentally speaking. You've been gearing up for this. You've been putting yourself out there. You've been getting rejected. Maybe you've been having small wins along the way and know how to handle wins, how to handle victories. And when that big opportunity does come, you're going to be able to take full advantage of it instead of looking like a deer in headlights asking, you know, what now? Now, I know it's hard to apply this advice because big opportunities don't just fall into your lap every day. You're not given a daily briefing of opportunities that you literally have to say no to and check off the no box to. But try to think about some of the daily opportunities that you maybe subconsciously just pass by because you're not in that positive mindset of going for things. Maybe it's collaborating with not even a hero, but somebody that's just a couple steps further along than you in the creative process, whatever your creative field is. Maybe it's putting yourself out there on different platforms or putting more of your work or progress shots out. There's individual opportunities for every individual artist or creative person. So try to journal or think about some of the opportunities that you can pounce on every single day. They could be micro opportunities that lead to something else. Anything that gives you that slight bit of nervous energy, those little bit of nervous farts, <laughs> go towards those things. That's a good sign that it's a thing that you could try. Just like it's important to build up a tolerance for rejection, for an opportunity not working out for you, it's important to also build up a tolerance for yeses, for many successes. Even if it doesn't move the bar too much further for you, to get those feelings of, yes, okay, my, my work is worth and my time is worth accolades or acceptance or likes, it's important to have those feelings, to build them up so that you have the confidence when big opportunities present themselves to jump on them. In his interview, David shared this wonderful vision of being out on stage during sound check and seeing all the spots that he was at in the arena when he saw The Who or uh, Pearl Jam or Guns N' Roses and being in the crowd, imagining him being on the stage doing awesome rocker moves. And now there he was living his dream. And what a wonderful idea. What a wonderful concept. What is your dream? What did you dream of when you were a kid? Maybe that is actually achievable for you. 
accept that. It's true. You might be able to live out your dream. You might be lucky enough to be able to live out your dream in one way or another. So give yourself that option. Give yourself that chance to get that lucky break. Sometimes it means that you have to start with tiny lucky victories, but give yourself that opportunity. Get out of that bad mindset of, well, I'm probably not going to win, so I'm not even going to try. Try. You have to buy a lottery ticket in order to win the lottery. So buy as many tickets as you can for yourself, big or small. Drop those Plinko chips and see where they land. You do deserve it, but you have to be the one to go and get it. So go and get it. If this was inspiring for you and you realize that you need to get out of your negative mindset and get more into a lucky mindset, please leave a like below. Make sure you subscribe so that I can help you in the future. This is what this channel's all about. And of course, down below, we'll have those episodes that I mentioned. If you want to listen to David and Vanessa's story, highly recommend them. I had such a fun time speaking with them. And of course, remember that the universe deserves and needs your creations and your art, and you are the universe. We'll see you next time.